Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday, the 1st of 2021. We are going to have so much fun on this channel and across all of Jay Stern Designs. I have a lot of things planned. I'm going back to a Q&A video today. I'm going to answer a question about removing excess fabric on the back leg when you're fitting pants or jeans. But before we do, I want to talk about this package. As you know, I've been opening packages that I've received for Warm Hats for All. And I am amazed at the generosity of you guys. Everyone who has sent me hats, I just want you to know I really appreciate it. My sister-in-law, Jackie, appreciates it. And she's working really hard to get those to people who really need them. And... Um, yesterday, or the day before, I got this package on my front steps, and I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, it's, um, it's, it's more fleece hats, but guess where they came from? New Zealand. I, I, I'm just blown away. I can see when people order the pattern, and I've gotten a lot of orders from out of the U.S., and if you're watching this and you're outside the U.S., if you'd like to use the hat pattern and make them for your local, you know, your local charities, that's fine with me. You don't have to send them to me. But James sent me these all the way from New Zealand, so let's open it up. And I'm so grateful, and thank you so much. All right, let's see. All right. I don't want to cut anything I shouldn't be, so just open this. We've received well over 50 hats already. All right, let's see. All right. Oh, look, a postcard. Pohara Beach, Golden Bay. That's some place I would love to go visit. Look how pretty that is. Let's see. Hi, Jen. I know these won't be with you in time for Christmas, but I'm sure it will be cold there for a while after, and I hope you can find good homes for them. We moved from the UK to New Zealand almost 20 years ago, and it still feels surreal having a summer Christmas. Our oldest is now in Newfoundland, so I'm sending his family a hat each as part of their Christmas box. Thank you for all the great videos such help getting me back into sewing garments. My last attempt was a high school. Oh, my last attempt was high school with a brief foray in toddler PJs. Kind regards. Oh, plus it was a 90 minute drive. Wow, Jane, thank you so much. And thank you for this very, very cool postcard. Very cool. Um, all right, so let's see Jane's hat. Wow, look at how nice these are. Oh, how fun. These are really nice. This looks like two hands holding, touching hands almost. Very nice. Wow, look at how many she made. Four, five, six, seven, eight nine, ten hats. Wow, we are now over 60 hats. Thank you so much, Jane. And thank you for taking the time and expense to send them all the way from New Zealand. I really, really appreciate it. And I know that my sister-in-law will too. I will get these to her tomorrow. All right. Yay. That was really fun. All right. So I've gotten some, I've gotten a few questions about removing too much fabric under your butt when you're fitting pants. This is a very common problem. And unfortunately, there are a lot of ways to remove that ease. And you have to find the one that's right for you because it involves not just the fact that there's extra fabric, but also the position of the back crotch curve. So what I want to do is show you two common things that might help you get rid of 
excess ease on the back leg, vertical ease. All right, so I made these little minis to show you, um, and I'm going to keep one of them as the sort of fact check. Okay, so I'm going to adjust one, and then I'm going to lay it on top of the unadjusted one to show you what actually happened. And let's start with, I'm going to draw on this one. So a lot of times, let me just get a pencil here. All right, so a lot of times when I'm teaching pants fitting, and it's been mostly virtual for quite a while now, what happens is I will get photos with my students wearing their muslins, and what they've done is they've pinned out fabric right in here. So, like, let's say they, just as an example, and this is about a half an inch on this small scale pattern piece. So, you can do this, this particular method up to about an inch. You don't want to do more than an inch because then it will start to get funky on top. But if you pinch out fabric here, so literally if you do this, I'm going to show you, on your muslin and you pinch it out, right, it gets rid of the problem and it looks, you know, your muslin looks great. So if you just pleat that out of your paper and sew up another one, what's going to happen? That wrinkle is going to come right back. So getting rid of fabric here really isn't addressing the problem. This is where the symptom is, um, but that's not how to fix the problem. So what I want to explain is I'm going to draw another line here, okay? Um, and I'll draw it in a different color. Why don't we go with pink? Okay, this is the crotch level, okay, where I drew this pink line. And the fabric, the problem when you have extra fabric here is caused by the fact that you just have too much vertical fabric on your back leg to fit your shape. So to get rid of fabric here, this is how I played around with it and did it. What I did was I slashed the pattern to the line, okay, and then I slashed um, to but not through my inseam and my side seam, okay? So I've created this sort of situation. So I could pleat this down, okay, like this. and pleat this down and tape it in place. So I'm actually pleating out the fabric right where it was pinned out of the back leg. Okay, so it looks like this. But you can see what's happened now is, look at the top of my pattern, it's a disaster. That's why you need to make a copy. Okay, so I'm gonna line this back up exactly with my horizontal and vertical balance line on the base of the leg. Okay, so I'm lining it back up here, and I think what I'll do is I'll just pin it here so you can see what's happening. Okay, so what's happening is this part right here, obviously this, this, this came in, because we pleated it and pushed it in to get rid of the fabric here. So right here, we've, this is where we lost fabric right here, okay? So something like this, this all of this blue that I'm painting is now gone. But where does it show up on your finished pattern piece? I'm gonna show you. So basically, the reason why you need to have a pattern piece that's that's the original copy is because we're going to put this back. Okay, we're going to put this back. All right, so I'm going to just, actually, I'm just going to tape this right to the piece underneath because it will become the finished piece. Let me just show you. So if you 
tape it on, then we know if it fit here, we need to keep this, right? Where does this fabric that we pleated out show up in the shape of the pattern? It shows up up here. So I'm just gonna draw, I'm gonna color it in so you can see. This is where it shows up. Okay, so basically, you know, we took it out here, but it actually shows up here at the end of the day. So this is one way to get rid of fabric. Now here's the thing. If you're working with muslin fabric to do your pants fitting and you do this to your pattern and reshape it and you end up with a scoop at the top of the waist edge, muslin is not gonna pull up when you sew it together. So if you if this is your pants pattern and you're working with muslin, what you need to do is you need to have your waistband above it. So the new edge of your waistline will look like this. I'm gonna cut that off, okay? And it dips down like this. So when you go to sew it and you sew it to a waistband, it will actually pull up right there and get rid of the fabric down here. If you're working with a muslin that you haven't developed the waistband for, so like when I teach my happy pants, the, we fit the legs and then we cut the top part off to make the waistband at the end. You need to, you need to cut that off and create your waistband and then sew the waistband to this edge to realize that adjustment if you're working with a muslin because muslin is not going to drape and allow this fabric to pull up unless it's sewn to something. All right, so that's one way. The other way is to remove fabric from below the crotch curve and then get rid of it above the crotch curve. All right, so I just wanna show you a second way to get rid of some of the fabric that's hanging out under your, under your butt. And in this case, you're gonna create an L-shaped guidelines like this. All right, and we're gonna cut this and we're gonna slide it down. Okay, so what that's doing is, it's take, oh wait a minute. Wait, before I do that, let me just draw. I just wanna go straight across here too. To, all right, so this is, sorry. Okay, so you wanna draw your horizontal and vertical guidelines like that. Then you can slide this down like this. you know, a little bit. And what you've done now is you've transferred some of the fabric um, that was below the crotch above the crotch because, let me show you why, now my crotch level is here. Okay, so all of this fabric right here, this was below your crotch level. Now it's above your crotch level. So we've taken some fabric from below and we've moved it up. And then at the top, depending on how the top of your muslin is fitting, just take this here, you could either true it up like this, okay, and get rid of that extra, or if you st if it was dipping down, you could fill that in and it lengthen it over here too. So those are the two ways you can deal with that. Now notice we did shorten our inseam, and also notice that the crotch point is now um, sticking out of your inseam. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to true that up by filling it in because if it fit through your leg and front to back in your crotch, you don't want to shorten it. So what you would do is you would just fill this in like this. All right, so that allows you to shift some of the fabric up and you're maintaining the shape. 
Now you have to do this adjustment to the front as well because you've shortened your inseam this amount. So whatever you did in the back, you have to also do to the front and you'll be able to pick your whole muslin up higher. And then if doing this creates too much length and your waist is too high, then it's just a simple matter of pleating it out and getting rid of it or cutting it off the top, depending on what the style is at the top of your pants. If you don't have any pocket detail or you don't have a yoke to worry about, you can just cut it off at the top, your extra length. Or if you have to worry about different features at the top, just draw yourself a guideline and get rid of it. So in this case, I can just cut it and remove it like this. So now I've gotten rid of that half an inch completely off the pattern. First I moved it above the crotch curve and then I just completely removed it by slashing and overlapping. So that's another way to get rid of extra fabric here. All right, so depending on how your muslin's fitting, you may actually need to do both of these things to get rid of um, if you have a significant amount of extra length on the back leg. But just remember, anytime you touch the length of the side or inseam, you also have to do the front piece. So you would do the same um, L-shaped slash on your front leg and slide that down an equal amount so your inseams stay the same length. All right, so that's how you remove excess vertical length on your back leg under your butt two different ways. You may need to combine these two adjustments to get rid of it if you have a significant amount. The subscriber who asked me the question had like two inches to remove, so it's going to involve lowering the crotch curve and also maybe doing this and getting some of it pleated out. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. I will help you. I also want to remind people that I have private Zoom pants fitting, jeans fitting, and shirt fitting. Um, if you're tired of working on fitting your pants yourself, it's like having me on speed dial. I will Zoom, call, email you as much as you need until you get your pants patterned the way you like it. And actually, I'm getting pretty good at doing this via um, remoteness because I've been doing it quite a bit this year. So I have one spot left in January. I have, I'm taking reservations for February. So I only take a limited amount because it is time consuming. So if you would like to work with me one-on-one -on, -one on your fitting issues, please check the links below. And then, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm cleaning my studio. I'm super excited. I'm gonna move out of the way. You can see, I think, that my back wall looks much nicer. I actually bought bins to organize my stuff. So on Friday, to continue my theme of cleaning my studio and becoming organized, we're gonna do a super fun project. It's going to be clear vinyl zippered project bags. The cool thing about this is you'll be able to see what's in them. They'll be zippered up and they'll be easy to store. And if you know what you need to make a project bag for, you can make it the size you need. I have purchased a bunch of these bags and a lot of times they're just a little bit too small to fit the pieces that I'd like to lay flat or whatever it is I'm trying to put in there. So I'll show you how to make custom size clear vinyl zippered bags on Friday during FabFit Friday. Um, I hope you'll join me for that. It's one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And that's it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you on Friday.